Firstly, sorry if this video is a little bit haphazard and thrown together. I wasn't actually going to make this, but uh, I thought it might be interesting for some. In fact, probably more interesting than a lot of the stuff I put on my channel. But uh, never mind. I've tried to find, in the last couple of days, trying to find a better method of doing product photography. So I wanted to just invest in some not, not expensive stuff, just to have a go and see whether I can improve it. This is the table that I've always used in the past to do product photography. You get really nice light from the uh, from the window there. You've got these kind of LEDs in the background. You get some nice, really nice shots on there. I've used this a lot in the past. Problem is, now it's always in use and it's always dirty. You can probably see on here, it's got all sorts of smears and stuff. And every time I have to clean it, I have to set up my tripod here in the kitchen. It's just a bit awkward. So I'll show you the um, alternatives that I have uh, now purchased to uh, try and get better, better results. First of all, I wanted to get one of these, and this is just a turntable. Uh, it's, I guess it's like a kind of lazy Susan for, uh, for cakes, uh, but it's motorized. And uh, this thing is, is fairly sturdy. I'll put a link to this in the uh, description of the video. You can take a look at it on uh, Amazon if you want. And uh, there's not much to it. It really is just a, a mains driven motorized turntable that rotates once every 90 seconds. And it's, it, it's super basic. I mean, you turn it on and off and it has that kind of effect like microwaves where depending on where it catches the AC wave cycle, it will go one way or the other. So it rotates kind of a random direction, but this, can stand up to 50 kilograms. I could put both my sons stood on here and it would still be okay. It really doesn't feel like it would um, handle that much. But the point of this obviously is to just put a product on top and be able to film it just slowly rotating around so I don't have to do that bit manually. All right, the second part of it is uh, this tent and I bought this from Essential Photo. So it's a Pixapro product. Um, Essential Photo are based in the UK. And they do sort of really reasonable price photography stuff. It probably isn't the same quality as um, really kind of high-end pro gear. But I, again, I was just kind of interested to see whether or not this would work for me. So I don't, I don't want to invest loads of money. I think this costs about, a, I, think, I think it was £100 actually. And this has, this is a, just basically a cube. It's like a big Borg cube. And this goes together very simply. Uh, it comes with a power supply with a with a dimmer switch on top. The dimming side of it isn't particularly good, so I wouldn't want to really use it at a dimmed, dimmed level because it seems to have like slight flashing on the LEDs, so not, not amazing in that respect. Uh, it comes with a standard C7, C7 mains connector there, same as the uh, turntable. That comes with the C7 as well. And um, I'll just show you how this opens up. So it's all Velcroed on the top and that just kind of opens up and you have your LED lights all built in internally. You've got a kind of hole here where you can f um, photograph through the top and it all, yeah, all kind of Velcros down nicely and it seems pretty secure. It's very, very easy to construct. It is a bit bigger than I thought it was gonna be, but that's fine, that's good too. And you've got uh, separate sections here at the front to kind of open up as much as you want to be able to photograph through and that's, what I've set up here. So I've set up my camera with uh, on, on, a, on a tripod. One of the considerations I had was whether to use a DSLR for this. So whether to film using my, uh, my DSLR to get that really kind of nice shallow depth of field. And I think that would be good on certain stuff, but with a plain white background like this, I don't think it really matters too much. So what, what the uh, Sony gives me is a much deeper depth of field deeper depth of field, much larger depth of field. And uh, therefore, it you know, you can see the background, but again, the background is just white, so it doesn't really matter. So this little thing in here, this is quite dark in here. It looks much lighter on the camera because uh, I'm just using auto exposure at the moment. But uh, this little thing in here looks quite lonely, doesn't it? But it also comes with, you can see, this is uh, this is actually, this this bit here is actually a separate piece so it comes with uh, the white one that was, is fitted at the moment. It also comes with this uh, peach one, which isn't particularly nice. It's kind of peachy flesh colored. And also with this black one and a gray one as well. So uh, they, they all just lay in and you can create a kind of sweep up the back to avoid any kind of lines in your or lines or major shadows. And you can, it just velcros to the top. And uh, it's really, it's pretty nice and easy to set up. It doesn't take long. 
uh, as long as it stores nicely, which is the main thing for me, I want to be able to just fold it down flat, which you can, and store it under the sofa. To show you this in action, I'm going to have to uh, just put this inside here. Right, there we are. We have the turntable inside. Now you get a, you've got a line here, but that doesn't really matter too much. You'll see why in a second. Uh, obviously, the limited you're limited by the port, uh, the landscape nature of the shot that you'll be taking. But this just slowly rotates around. And um, this cable doesn't, you know, it's you can see it in certain shots, but you can just work it so you get, can get it out of the way. Right, the camera's on and it's coming through to the Shogun here. This is a funny image at the moment because I haven't turned the light on, so we've just got a really dark image, hence all the noise on that. Let's turn the light on. The power up here, one-handed. Right, so that's the power turned up. Let's just make sure that's on full. And now we have a fully lit cube. So now the camera's adjusted everything. And so now this looks a bit, I don't know, it doesn't look fantastic on that. Maybe the background could do with, you've got a little bit of a sort of line here, but you may not notice that quite so much on the camera because we will have, we'll be zooming in a bit more and getting a, um, you know, slightly more shallow depth of field than you're seeing on this particular shot. So I'm going to film this in S-Log. Kind of a bit unnecessary, but I just like playing around in grading clips. So here we go. Let's just, I don't want to film the bottom of it particularly. So we can line up the tripod like that. Make sure our focus is good on the shot. Like that, and then we could um, just film that going round. I suppose I'm just going to make sure my white balance is set correctly on the camera. Hold on. Actually, ignore that. Uh, white balance is fixed, of course, because this is S Log Three, uh, 5,500 Kelvin, which should match the lights. The lights are 5,500 Kelvin inside the Borg cube. Just looking at this waveform in a bit more detail. Uh, if I just fill the screen with the waveform there, this is obviously the white area around the walkie-talkie. And I'm just making sure that that, because that is supposed to be pretty much white. So if I just open up the iris slightly on the camera, you can see that as I open it up, there is a little bit of headroom there, not much. That's completely uh, blown out now. That's sort of, uh, you can see it's flatlined at the top. You just see this section here is flatlined. So if we would just reduce that very slightly down, because the lighting conditions are, of course, completely fixed. And we're now, I suppose, exposing to the right, or I mean, that's what I tend to do when I'm shooting in S-Log. And this, so this area now is all pretty much as white as it can possibly be without going into super white. And this is, this, well, it should, it should look nice. It should look fine. In fact, I'm gonna turn the walkie-talkie on because it has that little nice red light flashing on it when it's on. Ah, it's surprisingly peaceful to watch this slowly go round. You've got to get it pretty much dead centre, otherwise, of course, it starts to track around the turntable, so, um, so then it moves further and closer uh, away from the lens, so then your focus point changes. So you've got to get it pretty much central so that you get a nice fixed shot like this. I'm not fully zoomed in. You can see my uh, zoom level here on this, on the Z90 here, is 74. I'm not fully zoomed in, so I've got a little bit of room to move. I've, I don't know, you can't see too much of the background though, can you? And I should be able to get rid of that. So let's just try and film this. Let me try and do this shot now. Just gonna record this little section of it going round the front here. You should be able to see the top. I've, the, the angle is maybe slightly too low. This is just how it's configured on this tripod at the moment. The first thing I thought when I got it is, well, what, what happens if I want the turntable to go around a little bit quicker? Well, of course, you can speed up your clip. I think if you mess about with it too much, you might get artifacts of the fact that this is just a, a mains thing tracking round and you might get slight jerks with it. It's not, it's probably not completely smooth motion, but it's good enough. And I have tried a clip at double speed and that looked fine. So yeah, you can rotate it in 45 seconds if you want, but this isn't a bad, speed I don't think it gives a nice sort of effect and it gives a nice way of just providing a bit of motion 
in the shot. Sideways motion's good as well, and I suppose I could move the camera. I could, I could kind of sweep sweep the camera slowly, kind of from left to right like this as well, just while it's turning. I don't know whether that might look a bit strange. Just do a really nice slow pan like that. Yeah, no, that that could work just to create a bit of sideways motion too, because just having this motion could get boring after a while. But this is just to provide alternatives. It's just to be able to do something a little bit different that I haven't done before. Okay, so I'm just going to reposition the tripod slightly. I'm going to try and get just a tiny bit further over the top of it, get a bit, a little bit closer, like this, just so it's a slightly tighter angle over the top of the walkie-talkie. I'm going to zoom into the buttons a bit more and see how much we can actually get that to zoom. I think we're, oh, we're actually at our max. There we go. Right, so that's the closest I'm going to be able to get on the product. But that's pretty good, isn't it? Let's just film a bit of that. And I'll show you what that looks like in uh, when I'm grading this in Resolve as well. Right, something a little bit more colourful, a bit, a bit larger as well. So there's a bit more movement from front to back. And that's where, of course, having the deeper depth of field, the, the, the bigger depth of field helps because it's much easier to control that. Of course, if you're using the DSLR so close, a lot of the time you're going to be struggling there. And uh, maybe on the full frame, it kind of you've constantly got bits of the image dropping out in and out of focus. But that can look nice. I mean, that can be a sort of artistic choice, I suppose. But for now, I just want to have a look at the product itself. So let's get, let's frame this up. I don't want it zoomed quite so much. I'll just let it rotate round 90 degrees. All right, so it's slightly, I've, it's actually framed kind of wrong for this shot because it's a bit too far over to this side. I really need to kind of just slowly move the tripod across. I think it still looks all right though. Here's the first shot of the Motorola that I, that I did there. And it's, well, it looks okay. I've kind of graded it in the same way that I would usually grade an S-Log uh, clip which uses a plugin it uses the film convert plugin probably not necessary really for this kind of thing what I have done on this is if I just go to my first node here sorry my last node I've added a, um, a final serial node I'd usually just have the two on a simple grade like this but if you look down the bottom left hand side here I've brought up the highlights and pushed those up so that the white around the edge here this white part of the image is completely blown out so I'm kind of going against what I was saying there on the on the video I'm not sure I think it's probably better to shoot without doing that that's would be my guess but I suppose you could technically shoot in that way and just have everything sort of blown out here in the actual footage but instead so if I just pull that down again you'll see what I mean so it just brings those those whites right up so they just become complete white. And fortunately, the product itself here, if you look in the waveform here in the bottom right-hand side, the product itself, pretty much everything on that is lower value, so a lower luminance value than that than those really kind of white, that white, lovely white background in the product box inside the Borg cube there. The second shot, well, because the lighting conditions are exactly the same, I should be able to just grade that the same by middle clicking on this uh, this clip here. And that, yeah, that that looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's really quite zoomed in. Fortunately, I've got this little bit of grab here on the back of the walkie-talkie. Didn't notice that when I was doing it, but that looks, I think that looks quite nice. I like it. The... LEDs inside this thing are not perfect at all. The uh, CRI, by, by the look of things, is not fantastic. So yeah, things do end up with a kind of a bit of a cast on them, which I have can easily correct for. But you do lose, as a result, you do lose a bit of that color vibrance. Maybe this sort of product wouldn't be ideal for doing sort of food photography because the lights it uses probably just aren't good enough for that. I haven't tested it to any great degree, so I can't say you know absolute certain that that's true but if we look at this one here this uh this is the third one and this is the monster and look he looks pretty nice i mean obviously moved the camera halfway through there but yeah that looks quite nice haven't 
blown the whites out with that. I do like the colorize um, option on this waveform here, so you can see exactly which bits are which. So, you know, we can see that this green bit here is the green part of the paint here. Yeah, I like that. Uh, again, just switching between the original. There's the original coming out of the camera. And that's the graded shot. Original, graded shot. I'll do the same for this one. There's the original, graded, and original, and the graded. Yeah, I'm happy with those. They've come out all right. So there we go. Um, hope you found that interesting. Uh, let's say links for the products are in the description. This is the... 70 i think it's 70 centimeters by 70 centimeters by 70 centimeters it's like a light tent thing from from essentialphoto.co.uk and um the road of turntable thing is is a 50 kilogram 40 centimeter turntable and uh, i've purchased both these products myself this isn't a kind of sponsored video or anything like that i just wanted to show you what i was messing around with so um if you've got any comments or any questions or any suggestions because i'm new to this so any suggestions do let me know